I am pleased at your attendance of this emergency meeting, and it speaks highly of us all that you've arrived on short notice. I know the memos contain scant detail, but I couldn't let word of our assembly leak to our foes. They are legion, and with no more than a whim, they would strike us down. But the time to act is now upon us, and as such, you must know all. The Han Dynasty is no more. He Jin, commander of the Emperor's troops, has been assassinated by eunuchs. Dong Zuo deposed Emperor Shao and replaced him with the Prince of Qin Lu, Emperor Zhen. He lords over Lo Yang at this very moment, terrorizing the populace with his barbarism. Cao Cao has issued an imperial edict in the Emperor's name, demanding a coalition rise up and free China from this horror. Many warlords have expressed their support, including Wan Shao. So too shall we. Yet I have greater aspirations than the overthrow of the usurper. Yes, if we let affairs continue unabated, then all of China will descend into warfare and bloodshed. Individual warlords, aware of the power vacuum, will struggle to print their own name in legends and lore. Such actions will deplete our people of strength and vigor until neither remain. Such actions will bring the death of us all. Thus, it is with a heavy heart that I reveal my personal dream, the total unification of China, under this banner, if necessary. Confidence and decisive action are both needed in this time of confusion, and I shall do all in my power to see peace among my brothers. From this day, before you all, I swear to devote my life to this land and this people. I swear to lead a fight which will end all fights, to command and prevail so no more may wear the yoke of terror. I will give up my blood and every shred of my spirit in order to see this dream come true. But despite my determination, I cannot succeed alone. Enemies reside everywhere pursuing their own agendas. Should there be a schism, they would pounce upon such weakness with glee. That is why I must turn to you, you grand brand of men, and ask for your aid in this fight. Help me bring an end to the war. Help me bring an end to the terror. Together, we can bring peace to all, and we can make my dream come true. I've summoned you all under the banner of Call to Arms. Now what say you? Hello everybody, 
and welcome to Call to Arms, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 6. I apologize for the, uh, the iffy intro. Uh, running my emulator in windowed mode while trying to capture it, and along with everything else, didn't exactly make the, the cinematic that happy. Anyway, uh, I'm actually using a new emulator, too. Uh, turn down the volume a little bit here. An emulator uh, which actually allows me to run uh, the stuff in windowed mode and capture it pretty easily. Uh, EPSXE was what I used previously for all of my PS1 emulation, and that was fine until I wanted to capture and record stuff. Then I started going into a whole mess of problems. So I found a new emulator called PSX. That's yeah, been working rather well for me, folks. Anyway, yeah. Romance of the Three Kingdoms 6. Um, really enjoyable. I am honestly torn between my enjoyment of 4 and 6. Like, um... I have uh, 10 and 11 as, like, my tier 1 to uh, RTK games, but I, if I had to go immediately below that, it would be between 4 and 6. Um, I like, uh... I like how in 4, uh, the music, I actually enjoy in 4 better than in the music in 6. And, um... I like the fact how, uh, I think it's amusing how, in Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4, which I'll probably end up showcasing later, possibly, you can abandon your cities. You don't have to really give a damn about all the cities. If you've got enough gold and food and troops, you can just sweep through the entirety of China and eliminate every fucking buddy, and you don't have to give a damn. This game <laughs> forces you to give a damn. Now, in this game, uh, which I've got to admit, uh, I mean, this was my first step. I mean, I played the first four, and I played the first four, and played the first four so many fucking times. And then back in, I guess, uh, 2005, I finally got my hands on uh, this game, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 6, Awakening of the Dragon. And, holy shit, this is leaps and bounds. The officer of the, everything with the officers is so amazing. And that is one of the main reasons why I love this game. All the detail and interaction with the officers is beautiful. And the dueling system, the battle system, it's all improved. It's all better. Interactions, it's all amazing and it's all great. So that means that officers are more important in this game because they're featured so more and they're showcased. And they are in Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4. This is where you folks come in. Because it's Call to Arms, like I did with RTK4. I'm gonna need officers to serve me. I'm gonna need you. So let's take a look at some stuff here. Let me load up my, uh, my old, uh, collection of officers here. So just so I can showcase a few things to you folks. This will be fine. So yeah, I can have up to 30 officers in this game. I'll be clearing out that officer list, except for, say, you know, my character. And uh, I will uh, rebuild you all from scratch. But... I'm not going to go and say that I'm going to plug uh, 29 of you fuckers into the game. No. <laughs> Let's just go with 20. 20 will be the magic number that I'll be plugging in, and I'll be choosing those at random, just like I chose uh, the last ones at random, using my magical uh, random number generators or what have you. Anyway, let's take a look at this list here. And you can see the list of officers I like to use in this game, anyway. Zeng Feng, we have his daughter Zeng Jia, we have a huge list of Reaper daughters, along with some old gaming friends of mine, that I've been plugging into Romance of the Three Kingdoms games ever since I started um, playing them, you know, whenever I knew about my friends. And you can see Master Reaper himself down here. Notice that there's a birth year, you put in a birth year, they have a gender, and uh, they actually have dreams. We'll get into explaining dreams later. Each officer has a dream, and that really plays big on what that officer likes to do and what he'll be best at, and uh, what he will enjoy. Let's scroll through the list a bit of stuff. Here's a list of statistics. As you can see, uh, my officer, my personal avatar, kicks the most ass because he is a champion 
officer. You can only have one of those and you unlock that, it's a secret. But uh, you can pretty much get all of your stats, almost all of them, maxed out. Uh, naturally, a Charisma Charm is my weak one, with a whopping 96. Everything else, though, I mean, you can't just plug in your own numbers. It's a bit randomized, like it is in RTK4. You can select themes, which leaves your character predisposed to certain things. But yeah. And let's see here, then we have uh, your whole parent selection and look and everything. Alrighty, so I've showcased my officers to you. I can go ahead and click on For example, I'll go ahead and show you off Master Reaper himself. That is the baddest motherfucker you will ever see in this game. Right there. Five daughters? Holy shit. Leadership 100, War 100, Intelligence and 100, Politics 100, Charisma 96. Eh. Born in 169 AD. Like I said, folks, that matters. Um, as opposed to, you know, just not mattering. It matters. <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought there. What I mean to say is that, uh, how in RTK4, you just assign age to an officer, and that age will be the same no matter what scenario you pick. In this game, that's not true. Depending on which scenario you pick, that determines which officers will be available and how old they'll be. Master Reaper is available from the very beginning due to how old he, how, what he held, his birth year, but the later officers are not so much. I'm not entirely sure which scenario I'm going to be picking to play. I don't know what I'm going to start. Uh, I may end up picking Dongzuo's Ambition again, but we'll see. I may end up going later just so I can show off something different than what I'm doing in RTK4. So let's say no. Uh, let's go on to creating an officer here so I can showcase the whole creation process. Put in family name. Uh, we will say Ultron. V O L T R O N. It fits, folks. By the way, you can tell. We we can see how many characters there are allowed to be. Eight. Okay, eight. If you give me a name that's longer than eight characters, it's gonna be chopped off. First name. We'll go with Lord. Why not? For kicks and giggles, everybody. For kicks and giggles. Presumably, this is also a... No, that's seven. By the way, I screwed that up entirely. So we'll just say V... L. That's good. Now, portraits. Lots of portraits, folks. Now you can see some of them are taken. Uh, they're not going to be taken except for Master Reaper's picture. We have more to choose from here. I think 8 times 9 is 72. That's a few more. Let's scroll through them so you all get an idea what's going on. I guess when you give me a suggestion for face, you can say, Page 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll go left to right on the top column, top row, then the bottom row. Okay, folks? You got that? Hope you did, because that's the fucking method I'm going to be following. And yeah, all these portraits will no longer be taken, because all these officers, except for my personal one, will be erased. Now you know. Let's scroll through them all here, just so you can get a look at everything. You can pause, just in case you forgot that capability, if you wish to take a longer look. <laughs> Some of these guys look funny as fuck. Master Reaper right there, the epitome of control. <laughs> Dum -de -dum -de -dum. I may actually change his dream to Empire. I'm not sure. I gotta think about that. I may have changed in my attitudes. Dum -de -dum -dum, dum -dum. And one more page. Yep. That used to be my old picture of uh, Master Grim. Grim himself until um, I became a champion. Now let's go ahead and change gender, which is the key button to do that. That was not the button to do that. 
Here we go. Only uh, four pages worth of female pictures, folks. Sorry. But I don't think that many females will be interested in watching this and giving me an officer suggestion, so... Hopefully we'll be okay in that, folks. Again, going through them. Dum 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 As you can see, I have a lot of daughters. That is how it should be, folks. I just think that's funny. Because, you know, the, the female was not really a prominent figure in terms of a military officer. And I made it that way. So, yay! Um, right. Change back to gender. That was not the right button at all. I gotta get used to my controls. My PlayStation controls on my keyboard are... Fucking funsies all around, everybody. And yet, it's been a while since I've actually played this game. So, yeah. We'll pick a, a great picture, I think. You. Now, we pick our, our officer's dream. There are actually more dreams than are listed here, but these are the ones you can pick for officers. The last two are assigned to you through various things. We'll start off at the left. Advisor. Support the Emperor. Unify the land. Ignore foreign nations. Justice. Make your city safe. Save the people through good government. Talent. Find a place to develop your own talents. Territorial. Govern and make safe your land. When the time is right, expand. Preserve. Concentrate on defense. Protect your land. Safety. Avoid danger. Live in peace and <clears throat> safety. Develop and ensure the safety of your cities. Empire. Raise your ruler to the imperial seat. Unify the land. Ignore foreign nations. Control. Expand your territory through invasion. Ignore foreign nations. Advancement. Find personal advancement in a chaotic world. Gather a fortune. And the two that are not listed. Loyalty. Give your life and loyalty to one you respect. Retirement. Leave behind the cares of this world. Now officers with dreams like Empire, Control, and Advance will end up preferring a ruler who acts similar to Cao Cao uh, overall in the novel. Uh, one whose ultimate goal is to be the emperor of a unified nation. Officers with the advanced dream are the ones who will um, suggest a council to name a ruler emperor if he obtains the hereditary seal and other gobbledygook like that. Now over here on the other scale, officers with dreams like a uh, um, Justice and talent, preserve and safety, these more calm dreams that are not aggressive at all, would end up preferring somebody who's like laid back. Like, uh, like I guess takes a laissez faire approach to uh, ruling affairs. I can't think of an example right now. Maybe Lu Biao? Um, that's L I U B I A O. Uh, you know, he could conquer the land, but, you know, he's not gonna offend or you know, hurt that many people in the process. He's not going to care that damn much. It'll just happen to fall into his hands. He'll be like, oh, this is cool, I guess. That's nice. Just mainly focused on protecting his own land. Now, folks who uh, enjoy advisor and territorial dreams would be better off serving someone, uh, noble and loyal and... Fucking insert Lube's name right here. Lube, Lube, L I U B E I. Yeah, him. Cause you know, uh, fucking novel sucks his dick. And you know, to be fair, I like to imagine him as a pretty noble guy myself. That's why, uh, in RTKX, I end up serving him, and I'm I'm proud and happy to do so because of the dream world I've concocted in my brain. Um, so yeah, Lu Bei and other officers like that, uh, they want to conquer the land, but that's in an effort to restore the Han Dynasty. And so they will, uh, take careful measures and precautions to just be a faithful minister, destroy rebels, but, you know, not do evil and insidious acts. So there we go. Now you know. For the purposes of this, we're just going to choose... Voltron should care about preserving the people. 
Earth. You can pick from the scale of 150 AD to 230 AD. If you pick 230 AD, you're pretty much going to be out of the loop. Because I'm not going that far to 234. That's not going to be my starting point. You'd probably be safer picking an AD around 200. Ah, no, that's stupid. Maybe not that. I mean, it's safe, as in your character would live to see the end of it. But, you might want to actually be usable in 200. So maybe, you know, do that. <laughs> you got me. Those birth years that I put were pretty even and stable. I think I gave the minimum possible age for Master Reaper to be active in 184. So it was at 169. I think that's what it was, 16 years old. Make sure your character is at least 16 years old in this game. Okay, folks? For, like, a common number theme there. So, if you want to be minimally usable in December 189, you're 174. That's when you were born. Perhaps you want to be usable, first usable in October 194. Be 179. Your ages and when you're going to die are random, but if I remember correctly, officers tend to live pretty long in this game. So it's not going to be sudden spur of the moment, oh lo, you just keeled over and died like an RTK4. But I make no promises, folks. I make no promises. For shits and giggles, we're just going to go ahead and pick 169. Am I choosing a parrot? Nah. You're not going to have parents, folks. I won't let you have parents. One officer, that's it. Although this will actually allow you to uh, choose to be a child of any officer already in the game. Which is pretty awesome, I think. Like Kiao Mao, that son of a bitch, or Huang Fu Zong. I think that'd be a pretty guy, to, pretty awesome guy, or Huang Zong, to be your dad. But that's not going to be happening. So here we go. LV. Male, preserve. Now we pick officer type. We have just a generic officer whose um, things are there, his maximums there, which are randomly generated. Uh, we have a general, which has an emphasis towards leadership. We have a warrior, whose emphasis is towards war. Strategic, strategist, strategist, <laughs> Str st st strategery. I'm like George W. Bush. Holy shit, children. Emphasis on intelligence. Minister. Emphasis on politics. And retainer. Emphasis on charisma. So there you go, folks. The amount of points you can get are randomly generated, as you can see. I can do... I can do this. Revalue the max. I think the highest maximum bonus points you can get is 130. In that situation. I'm not going to be doing all that random rerolling shit. I didn't do it in RTK4, not going to do it here. Whatever the game gives me the first time around is what you're going to get. Tell me the type of officer you'd like to be, and I'll make statistics happen. Okay, children? So you may not get those shiny 100s that you'd like. Oh, fucking well. Tough titty, children. Tough titty. For the emphasis of this, we're just going to increase all that stuff. Besides, so you guys should be pretty. You, should, you guys should be more balanced out anyway. I'll balance you all out by just randomly assigning shit like that. There, that's a pretty average and balanced guy. I'd like to have him on my side. Is that okay? Nah, screw it. Turn to records menu. Yeah. Alrighty, folks. So there you go. Now you have your. Uh, now you know how that's gonna look. Now, I can bring a lot of officers with me. I think I can bring nine officers with me, as a matter of fact, in addition to my rulers. So, undoubtedly, I'll have an heir along as well, if I can, depending on if I go to a, uh, a later scenario, but I might go to an early one. We'll see. So, more of you will get to come along and be with me at the beginning, and so in RTK4. Alrighty, just to recap here, folks. Here's what I'm going to need from you. First off, I'm going to need the name of your character. Give me your family name first. Give me your family name first. Family name, put it first. 
write it as I'm going to put it in the game. Don't look at Master Reaper. Think of Zing Thing. Or I need a <clears throat> bad example because I made that look funny. If you didn't notice that, folks, yeah, I got bored with a few of these officers. Had fun with Dong Wang and Anita Cock. <laughs> Yeah, shut up. <laughs> Alrighty, um, so yeah, back to Master Reaper here. Gonna need a name. Family name, first name. Family name, first name. If you give me first name, then family name, your name's gonna look stupid. Unless the game, unless that's your motherfucking plan. Remember, at any moment, I may defy the RNG and just kick your officer's suggestion out of my life. Okay. The next thing I'm going to want is a face. Give me a face number. Try to tell me where the face is using that page thing and then the rows and whatnot. If you don't do that, I'm going to pick a face for you. You may not be satisfied with it. Naturally, along with that should come your gender as well. Tell me what your character's dream will be. You have a description of all the dreams available in the game. And what you're going to end up being doing. What you'll end up being best at. Those who like the kinder side of affairs would like to do stuff like build up a city. And they'll work together with other people who have that same dream. People who have conflicting dreams get aggravated. And they lose energy, which... We'll explain that mechanic whenever I actually play this fucking game, folks. I have a lot of explaining to do whenever that happens. Um, so yeah, give me your dream. Tell me your birth year. Um, you can make it 150 AD if you'd like. You can also make it 230 AD if you like. Um, I'm still not entirely sure what I'm going to start. Maybe in the, uh, the beginning of the 200s. Just so I can show off more of the Three Kingdoms symbolism and more of Cao Cao being a powerhouse as opposed to what he is now in RTK4, which is not a whole damn lot. Okay, and uh, give me your officer type. Tell me if he's going to be original, a general, a warrior, strategist, minister, or retainer. Give me the type. I will assign your characteristics myself. By telling me your type, though, you tell me what you want to be. For example, if you want to be a general, I'm going to assume, and I'm going to do, point, I'm going to put your points primarily in leadership, and then go down from there. Retainer, I'm going to assume charisma and charm, and go from there. You get the fucking point. Tell me your officer type. Officer type. Yeah, you don't get any kids. You don't get to have a parent. You just sprung up out of existence. Each of you has an opportunity to suggest one character to me. That's it. You suggest a character to me by putting it in the comments for this video. You put it in the comments for this video. You don't message me on Skype. You don't send me the damn thing on TeamSpeak. You don't private message it to me on YouTube. Don't private message it to me on the Voltron Army. Put it here in an easily managed, easily noticed place. So that whenever I go through, I can see all these things in one broad sweep and add you all to the shiny magic number generator. What the fucks? If you don't follow those steps, I'm either going to ad-lib this shit, or you're not going to get an officer. Guaranteed. Alrighty. Name. Face. Sex. Control. Dream. <laughs> Control your dream. Birth. Officer type. In the comments. Said I'll be creating 20 of you guys. 20 of you will end up being in the game. Considering how much popularity was an officer voicing things for RTK4, and that I'm giving you guys a lot of advance time, I'm expecting more than 20. Which is why I'll have to use random number generators. In the event that doesn't happen, then I'll just pick up the first 20 and go from there. So yeah. 
You all have your marching orders. If you want to have an avatar in this game, do that. Follow that list. Follow the list. I cannot emphasize how much you need to follow the list. I will face palm head desk if you do not. Like that. Okay. Final thing, let's actually take a look at scenarios here. Let's say we pick 200. February 200. Why is my... I, I ended up knocking my mouse pointer into that. So let's take a look at the map. Holy shit. So yeah, Wan Shao is still pretty much kicking ass around here. We've got uh, Cao Cao. Lu Bei is uh, flying around there with... Actually, he's not... Uh, a warlord, established warlord in this scenario. He'll come around later. I think he's still involved in uh, the scenario events, though. He's still pursuing the generosity of Lu Biao, or he's uh, in Lu Zhang's territory somewhere. So, yeah. New ruler. I will pick Master Reaper. Will you have someone with you? See, I can take all these people, and I could take two more. So let's just take that just to showcase how this is going to look. Select the city to rule, we'll just select Changsa. That's good. We're okay with that. Advanced mode, that's what I'm going to be playing on. All the rest of those settings are fine. This is how the map looks. This map is beautiful. I like this map. It tells you everything you need to know at first blush. And this is our this is gonna be our basic look at screen. Look at screen, yeah. Let's get some more volume into that. Alrighty everybody. You've got your marching orders. And uh I look forward to seeing you all. Answer the call to arms. And join me on my quest to unify China. I'm I'm definitely sure I'll be changing Master Reaper's dream to empire as opposed to control. It's more fitting given the circumstances of everything. So yeah, I'll see you folks then. Make sure you tune in so we all can get on with it. <laughs>